Hey there, Alex Kidman, having a quick look at the camera on the iPhone SE 2020. I will do a full review of this particular phone, uh, both in video and in text, but I wanted to concentrate on the camera because it's probably one of the more contentious parts of this particular phone. Now, Apple says that it's the best single lens camera that you can get on a phone. And is that right? Well, it depends. It, it's kind of a question of context. If you're coming at it purely from iPhone territory, if you're only interested in iPhone, then yeah, it's probably true. If you're looking at it from a wider perspective, no, I really don't think it is. But let's have a look at the hardware first. So it is a single lens camera and Apple's been kind of coy on this, but the reality is it is based on third party teardowns of the iPhone SE 2020, the same camera module that was in the iPhone 8. I already commented in my unboxing. This is a phone that very much looks like the iPhone 8. And there's a reason for that. And as it turns out, the hardware inside is pretty much identical. Where it is different, though, is in the inclusion of Apple's A13 Bionic chip. That's the same processor that you get in the much more high-powered iPhone 11 Pro Max, for example. Now, I should point out that I'm assessing this very much with the viewpoint that if you want one, you want it because you're looking for an everyday kind of camera. You're not a pro shooter. If you're a pro shooter, Apple has a phone for you, but it's very much this one. It's the 11 Pro Max. The 11 Pro Max is considerably larger, obviously, but also much more powerful as a camera phone. Now, again, if you're looking at the Android side of the fence, it gets much, much wider, and you can start to talk about phones from lots of Samsung or Huawei, depending on where you live in the planet, as having much better cameras again, but that's an entirely separate argument. The SE 2020 is, I think, very much a phone and a camera designed for kind of everyday users who just want to take everyday photos. So let's have a look at what it can do. So here's the camera UI. And look, it's very much the standard Apple camera UI. If you've used any iOS camera app in the past couple of years, you've used this camera app. There's not too much to say. The smaller size of the SE does make it a little bit easier to hold. But as you can see, that smaller screen, of course, and the fact that you've got both the bezels on the phone itself and then the UI to contend with means that you've got a fairly small actual shooting area. You do get the usual nice tricks like being able to slide to do video recording or to do multi-captures um, if that's your preferred thing. But it's not a very complicated camera app. And look, that's probably for the better for its intended market. Obviously, if you do prefer to kick things up a notch, you can go for more complicated apps like Obscura, as I've got here, for example, but that single lens is also going to hold you back. Again, I think an awful lot of people are simply going to stick with the default Apple camera app. Now, let's have a look at a few camera samples, because this is where things get kind of interesting. There's, there's some really good stuff, and there's some stuff that's not so great. So, what I like about it, look, for everyday shooting, you can get some really, really nice effects. You can get some just nice shots. I tend not to shoot with a live camera, but you can if you like. It's got those kinds of features, and it does a, a fairly good job of just capturing everyday standard photos. Um, obviously, the other challenge with the current COVID-19 pandemic is it's limited the ability that I've had to go out and do lots of you know fast-moving photography or taking a lot of nature scenes because I can't really travel all that much. So these are very much photos that just happen to be local to me. But you can get some nice and good effects. One thing that I did rather like, this shot is not the most amazing shot I've ever taken. But if I crop in a bit, I captured this bee having a, a, a little thirsty drink, which is kind of cute. It was a detail I didn't even realise I was taking that it was capturing. You also get portrait mode. Now, there's no depth sensor on this camera whatsoever. And at this price range, anything that wasn't iOS, you absolutely could get a depth sensor. And so here's a, here's a sample portrait photo. And look, it's not a bad shot. I'm not the world's most photogenic man, to be sure. But it does look very green screen-esque. There's not a whole lot of sense of depth that it's actually properly captured where my background is in relation to me. It looks very photoshopped. And it's not. This is absolutely just the standard shot, although YouTube might do a slightly interesting job compressing it. One area it does not excel in is low light, unfortunately. And I do think this is a big problem for a phone, even at this price point, because this is, in Australia at least, high mid-range pricing, starting at 749 
And that kind of pricing can buy you any number of cameras with some kind of low light shooting ability. This really struggles in exactly the same way, of course, that the iPhone 8 struggled. That A13 processor might kick it up a little bit, but not substantially so. And it does raise the fairly obvious comparison spectre. And that's the Google Pixel 3a. I've got a Pixel 3a here. And it's slightly interesting actually comparing them side by side. Because whilst the Pixel 3a is a bit taller, you get a lot more screen space out of it. But you also only still get that single camera. However, it does a much better job of low light photography than the iPhone SE 2020 does. It's a real weak point for this particular phone. So that's my final verdict. Well, look, I think this is probably going to do 90% of what people need it to do. I think that lack of low light capability is a genuine concern. It is something that Apple perhaps can deal with to an extent. Obviously, it can't add another camera sensor on there, but there's a fair bit of grunt in that A13 Bionic processor that it could use to further enhance its low light capabilities down the track. And Apple's certainly shown it's willing to go down that path of improving its camera app over time. I mean, you don't always see with every other Android phone. If you're coming at it from a whole of phones perspective, no, this is not the best single lens phone on the market. I would give that plaudit to the Pixel 3a at the current time of recording. Obviously, the 4a is incoming. But we don't exactly know what it's going to have. If you're coming at it, however, just from the iPhone market, yeah, I think it does a lot for the money and it does a lot in a way that's substantially cheaper than something more pro-focused like that 11 Pro or 11 Pro Max. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and don't forget to hit like and subscribe.